Good morning. We're from Children of St. Martha's School in Lethbridge. We're located on the west side of Lethbridge. And we are um, kitty corner to our, we're a Catholic school, we're kitty corner to our own parish, um, St. Saint, Saint Martha Parish as well. <clears throat> I want to introduce or take this time to introduce the people that are here with me today. I'm Shannon Collier. I'm the associate principal at Children of St. Martha. This is my first year at the beautiful school. We have 220 students from pre-K to grade six. Beside me, we have Shelly Sampath. Shelly is a grade four or five teacher at Children of St. Martha. This is her second year at the school, but she has been in education for a lot longer than that. Behind me is Louise Dixon. Louise Dixon is our grade two teacher, and she has been as well at Children of St. Martha for two years, but in education for a lot longer than that. And Christina Fox. Christina Fox, you'll see in a lot of the videos that we'll share today, she has been the backbone of our school and the support that we are going to share with you today as our family liaison counselor at the school. She's involved in every single class with every single student and family, and we are very blessed to have her at our school each and every day. So not part-time, not in consultation, but she is with us every step of the way as we embed FMNI content into all that we do as a family at Children of St. Martha. I'm gonna let Christina Fox come up and speak. Happy day, good to see each and every one of you. We start off with our honor song. For life is sacred. Children are celebrations. Walking and learning together is a rich tradition. My title is First Nations Métis Inuit Support Staff. Long title, which I'm very proud of because I am today I am representing my people and my neighbors. The theme this year is called Horizon of Hope. When we started doing the beautiful artwork of Horizon of Hope, we came to the meaning for it. The gift that we receive each and every morning because life is a gift from God. When we look to the east, when we think about it, at the end of the day, the, the horizon of hope, that's when the sun starts to come up and we realize we're alive to share our talents and our gifts. There we pray for direction and guidance. We're also blessed with vision, courage, wisdom and knowledge. For in the East, we look at vision to help us acknowledge our children's dreams and to be able to dream with them and to be able to dream with the parents and have them share their dreams with their children. We look to the South, the highest point of the sun. There we start to prepare for our future and for the day to come. And then we look at wisdom to recognize each child's gift and talent, for they have so many. West, where the day starts to end and we start to relax. There we need to end our day with dreams, prayers and meditation. And we think about the knowledge, what we did today for our beautiful children. Acceptance, getting to know them as individuals. North, where the source of strength comes within. And this is courage, because at the end of our day, when we relax, 
we pray and ask our Creator, did we embrace our call to serve with love, faith, and hope? When we come in through that door, yes, we all have titles. I like to believe that my title, number one, is being a mother. Each and every one of us are teachers because one, we are mothers, we are fathers, we are aunties and we are uncles. So in looking at education, we look at our heart and we go to our mind. And what this honor song does for us is that it opens our hearts and it opens our minds and then back to the minds and back to the heart. And that's how we deliver our knowledge to our children. So, to start with, I am Shelley, and for looking at directions, focusing on the north, that's focusing on the strength and the needs and kind of where our students started from. Um, so this was a sample of our grade six family gathering that just took place last month. Basically, the purpose of it was to, success, to, to highlight the successes of our students, not just in their final year of elementary school, but throughout their educational career. Um, Christina and the grade six teacher, um, Mrs. Collier as well, <laughs> they organized with the students' parents to get everyone to come to the family night. And from there, they yeah, again, celebrated their successes. Christina also helped organize a similar family gathering night in October to emphasize really the importance of family in our students' um, success at school. Looking again, we have um, a student who is dragon boating. The importance of first-hand experiences was also emphasized. We went to the Ignite Your Spark Fair um, a few weeks ago. And this is also important because giving our students first-hand experiences is really, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, is really helpful. And then, oh, so thank you. <laughs> um, at the Ignite Your Spark, there was dragon boating, skateboarding, jingle dancing, as well as hoop dancing, to name a few. And then, so also at the powwow, um, we have a powwow each year, which Christina actually informed me, it's been seven years. It's held, um, been a huge part of the strength in our school. Students experience um, the traditions and stories involved in the powwow, as well as they get to experience um, and participate in building a teepee and learn the proper teepee protocol. Christina was also able to work with the grade four students um, and work towards um, kind of bridging and linking Catholic traditions with the First Nations traditions as well. So that was a, a big success. And then finally, um, this FNMI project has given us the opportunity to emphasize the strengths and provide the necessities for our students to learn through permeation of our First Nations traditions and cultures. Good morning, I'm Louise Dixon. I am tasked with looking at leadership and guidance in our school as we started the three-year project. A lot of us weren't sure um, which direction we were going on. And between Solange and Christina, as well as our board office, we were able to begin our project. 
we really discussed as a staff, what has this three years meant? And what was the, maybe, what were the good things that came out of the project? We discussed that there was a lot of good things happening in the school, but we weren't working together. We weren't sharing those um, ideas because we didn't have any authentic time to do that. To sit down with your colleagues for an entire day and work on projects together that you come up with together, then you have a vested interest in them and you have a vested interest in seeing that they succeed. Christina was there and so was Solange all throughout the days that we did the planning. Christina was there to answer those questions that as, a t as teachers, we feel that we have to know the, um, the information. Well, there was a lot of questions that were hard to ask and you felt like a child asking, asking questions that might be politically incorrect, challenging what you knew, challenging yourself to have a deeper understanding in what you were teaching and, okay, you're putting the content into your teaching, but what is it that you were putting in? And Christina was wonderful in answering all the questions that we had, no matter what we asked, no matter how we asked it. And that, to me, says a lot about Christina and her devotion to our kids and to our First Nation students, but also to our kids in general, because she wants the best for all of them. One of the things that we said, too, was it would give the staff time to build relationships with each other, build that trust relationship, and that filtered out into our relationships with our parents as well. We see more parents coming in. We see uh, more parents coming in, coming to help their child and help their child in terms of this is what I need you to do as a teacher for my child and those kind of conversations were not always happening and it's nice to say that they are now the staff was able to attend workshops and PD sessions that were given by other districts there was a group of us that went to Blackfoot Crossing with Randy Bottle and we're able to learn about the signing of Treaty 7 and what it would have been like for those people at that time. That is authentic learning as a professional because that is learning I couldn't get anywhere else. We also talked about how do we embed that learning into all that we do so we can get the most out of the funding from the province. And one of the things that we did is we took a spiritual retreat normally reserved for somewhere, some venue around Lethbridge. Instead, we went down to Writing on Stone. And we had, we learned what that meant to the people, the Blackfoot people, and how sacred it is, and why, and how things happened there. So that's authentic learning that we can carry back to our classrooms. We challenged, during this time, a lot of long-held beliefs that were in the community about um, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit culture. And it was nice to see that we are the better for it. Some really authentic learning took place as a staff, changing, changing not only how we felt, but how we reacted to certain things like attendance. You know, really looking at the deeper meaning of what does lack of attendance mean? and why aren't they there? And I'm happy to say that we've had some successes in that regard as well. Lastly, it opened our eyes to the realities of residential schools from first-hand knowledge of listening to Christina, as well as Peter Strikes with a Gun, talk about their experiences. They are leaders in our journey, and Solange and Christina and the province for giving us the funding. They've really started off something, so we're hoping to keep that, keep the momentum rolling. Christina is an elder in the Blackfoot, or in the um, Blood Tribe. She has been our liaison for a number of years before even I came to the school. This position includes home visit, classroom visits, 
facilitating meetings between parents, school, and st school to stakeholders, like teachers, board office employees, and the community. She also brings with her a wealth of cultural knowledge to our non-native and native students alike, and staff, as she teaches us the Blackfoot language as well. Christina is also responsible for saying the prayer in Blackfoot every Wednesday, and the kids have picked up the, our, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Blackfoot as well. And it's really wonderful to see the kids saying it as soon as she begins. So she's, they're now joining her. She sings and plays the guitar, teaches music. She teaches life skills in order to build a self-esteem, confidence, and pride in who they are. She also facilitates workshops and staff retreats for all ages, not only in the school, but outside of the school. And we are fortunate to have her on our staff. Tom Little Bear would also join us. He was a, he's a member of the Blood Tribe and traveled down with us to Writing on Stone and shared a lot of his stories and shared a lot of the culture with us while we were down there, and we thank him as well. Peter and Jeannie Strikes with a Gun have been in our school so often that we feel like they're family, like they are always there. Peter is an elder in the Pecani Nation. Peter's stories combine scripture and cultural ways, which gives a strong teaching and meaning to whatever he's speaking about. He's one of the important resources that Christina calls upon for whatever we need in our school. So at um, Christina's invitation also, he's coming to join our powwow this year, our seventh annual powwow. And he's taught us a lot about the culture, but dancing, he's taught the kids about the regalia, and he's also invited them to come up and try, the, try a hand at, at dancing. So the kids really enjoy that, and they become a part of it, even though they're non-native. So, we have done some interesting things, and I'm hoping to continue this even after the project is no longer. I'm speaking to the South, and I have to thank, thank Louise because Christina and I were just smiling and winking at each other. When you can hear a teacher take half the things that I was going to say as an administrator and share that with you today, makes my heart um, just overwhelmed with happiness because it shows that the teachers, every single teacher in Children of St. Martha has included and embedded FNI content in all that we do. When I walk into the school every morning, speaking of the South, I walk in and you can feel the energy in the building. We have a high percentage Probably one of the top um, percentage of FMNI students in our district come to Children of St. Martha. Some of those little kids get on the bus for an hour every morning, and Christina is the first person who greets them every morning to give them breakfast. So we have a breakfast program. At the end of the day, before a lot of those children get back on the bus to head home for an hour or longer, Christina is out there with sandwiches bringing them out to the bus. Um, we're high-fiving the bus driver and saying, take care of our little ones as you take them home. So this is my first year at Children of St. Martha. I had 20 years of junior high, high school, grade seven to 12. So this is my first experience in a pre-K to grade six. And I need to share with you that I have never seen a school like this school. You just have to walk in to see the families that surround the children and the teachers that are really engaged in all that they're sharing with you today. In addition, because I don't want to take, I don't want to go over time, I need to share with you as well, our district central office, Mr. Chris Smeaton, is one of the head supporters that really allow within our schools for people to embrace this and really make it part of what we do. So Chris Smeaton was honored in 2004 with his Blackfoot name, Sacred Wings, which is 
la nuit, minuit. We're very pleased and proud that our leader from our district office has been given that honor. I'd like Christina to come up and we'll speak about the East or the West. What I have in my hand is my Indian filing. Children of St. Martha's know about that. Blackford class, they come to ask, who can join Blackford class? And I say, we are all children of God. My Blackford class is open to everyone and anyone. We as Nietzsche, meaning real people, education, we look at it differently because we live by the honor song. We have a responsibility in the transfer of knowledge. We believe that every child needs to live with faith, need to live with hope, and need to live with love. Our responsibility, we need to praise often, appreciate our ch children often, build security, give them faith to believe in themselves. We need to accept, build their self-esteem, and they need to know that they are loved, they are valued, and they are cared for. The Lord's Prayer translated to Blackfoot is so beautiful and so powerful because it's the world's prayer. And every Wednesday, like Mrs. C had mentioned, I get the opportunity to say the Lord's Prayer over the intercom every morning. And all the teachers come and say, the children all followed you. Everyone is learning. And so for their homework this summer, the rest of the staff with Mrs. C, they're going to learn the Lord's Prayer. And so their first exam is September before they come into that door, I'll try and beat Mrs. C in the, that morning of September. The honor song opens our hearts and our minds, like I had mentioned. That is our foundation, all that we do to be able to build faith, hope, and love for each and every one of our children and us staff. And the four aspects of our nature, mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional, they are like seeds. They have the potential to grow into powerful gifts. There we can look at their culture, our culture, every one of us here, our identity and language, our self-concept, our self-esteem, and our self-determination. We have a teepee. You saw the little teepee, the miniature teepee. That is in my office. By the way, I'm so blessed to have my own office and I have my classroom. How important can they treat me? I'm blessed. And I believe that we should all have a teepee visual in our schools because with the teepee teachings, we teach about every step in putting up our teepee. We have the four main poles that represent the Northeast, Southwest. It can also represent the flower, our people, mom, dad, son and daughter, or grandma and grandparents. And with the rest of the poles are the values that we, we use. We teach our kids. Atsimutskan, that's why I had started off with the Lord's Prayer. Atsimutskan is the spirituality. Kimabibitsini, kindness to others. Respect for others. And to be Blackfoot, to be proud of who you are always. 
being able to take on tasks independently because you have the faith within yourself. Being helpful to others, such as what we're doing here today. We're wanting to help each other because we are all working for children. And for that, I'm very proud of each and every one of you. And everything comes in pairs. We need to balance, work on our lifestyle. We need to look at the four aspects of our nature. And everything that is given to a person to do what they want with it and guide them because they too have lots of knowledge to share. It is a great honor to be a part of the family of the children of St. Martha's because I, as an individual, really feel like a family member. Down the hallway, I meet a group of students, a class, going to another classroom, and they all say, okay, and that is so nice, which means hello, or Kate Madsen, we'll see you again at the end of the day. So that is so nice, so nice. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is an honor song opening for each day. For us at Children of St. Martha's School. When we truly love our children, work is not hard. When we truly put our titles in the back of our pockets and work from the heart, success will be a blessing. Thank you. God bless you all.